Good morning. Today's message will come from the book of James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'll be reading you verses 1 through 4, but I encourage you to read the entire chapter. I think it's like 27 verses. We relate to our message today. Um, James chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, But let patience have her perfect works, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I took our key text, sermon text today from verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in to divers temptation. This morning, I want to preach a while, and I want to use for a subject this morning, count it all joy count it all joy are these words that you have heard before or used in your life maybe perhaps to help someone else in their life i want to say that right now my wife is probably i can see the smile on her face as i, as I read this because this is one of my wife especially the sermon topic this is one of my wife's favorite verses you know to count it all joy and this morning, I want you to just think about it for a day. You know, if we use those words, I wonder what people would think about us as, as children of God or as Christians. That's, it's positive, certainly a positive statement, count it all joy. But when someone is going through something, when someone is going to difficult times and, and you say unto them, count it all joy, I, I would want to believe that they would think we have lost our mind. We just lost our house. Count it all joy. It's a bad accident. Count it all joy. The doctor just diagnosed with me with this. Count it all joy. What the Bible is telling us today, whatever circumstances we were facing in life, we ought to count it all joy. Very tough statement. Especially, as I said, when you're going through something. Difficult times, trying times. Now, things are going good and things on the up and over. We got all that we need and things are going well. Those are words we love to hear. But what about when you're going through, going through some things in life? What about trials and tribulations, storms? Count it all joy. As I said, this is my this is my one of my wife's favorite verses. And and whatever the circumstances were, were when we first got married and going through things. Whatever we were facing in life, my wife would always say, count it all joy. Money low. Count it all joy. Honey, I don't know if we have enough this month. Count it all joy. Honey, I'm not feeling well today. Count it all joy. Honey, I got upset at work today. Things didn't go like I wanted to and I got upset. Count it all joy. No matter what I told her, she replied, count it all joy. So I began to wonder, is she listening to me? Is she hear what I'm saying? Or, or is she uh, you know, doing things and maybe acknowledging me but not really hearing? Count it all joy. Was she hearing me? Is she listening? Perhaps she's not listening. I don't know. I know every time I said something, she said, count it all joy. Y'all do know that can happen. You know, listening but really not be listening. I, can, I hear you. I hear you. But it don't get done. I hear you, I hear you, but it's never taken care of. This happens all the time. And I can say it happens a lot in the workplace. You can be telling someone, I want you to do this. So I, I want you to meet me at 10. And, and they'll reply, okay, I got you. I'll be there at 10. 10.05 come, 10.10 come, and, and they're nowhere to be found. And you give them a call, hey, where you at? I'm at building 6. Or I'm in the yard. I'm down the street. I'm in Taylor, wherever it may be. I thought you was coming to the office. I thought you was coming by. Oh, I didn't hear you say that. Listening and not listening. But you acknowledge that because you said, okay, I'll be there. So far, so for years, I thought this was my, what my wife was doing. I thought my wife was listening, but actually not listening. Because she always said, count it all joy. Honey, I put your car in the shop today. What shop? Count it all joy. See, she wanted to know. She asked that question. What shop? But still, count it all joy. So one day I, I, I said, well, honey, I still love you. You better count it all joy. 
And she still said the same thing, but she threw that extra word in there. You better count it all joy. Basically, the same thing. And she says, and I asked her, you always say count it all joy. We go and someone may be sick or called to give their last uh, rites. And, you know, and she said, well, count it all joy. And I asked her one day, honey, you always say that, you know, and she said, well, James is my favorite verse. And she said, I say that for three reasons. Number one, James said it. And then she said, honey, you taught us this in Bible study. You taught us this in our spiritual uh, training that we ought to count it all joy. That's number two. And then third, she said, I learned to count it all joy. She's gone through some things. I've gone through some things. You've gone through some things. But we have to learn, learn how to count it all joy. That was a testimony from a wife to me. And church, this is our sermon topic today. God wants us to count it all joy. Whatever, whomever, whenever you are going, whatever, whomever, whatever you're going through, God wants you to count it for good, count it all joy. I used to always ask, why is my wife saying such things? Count it all joy. I'm sick. The car broke. I'm upset. That's, that's more money it's going to take. That's me laying down, having to rest, having to take medicine. That's one, me needing to cool off because I got hot. How can you count it joy? How can you count it joy in times like this when you're going through so much? How can you count it joy broke? How can you count it joy when you ran out, ran low and ran out? How can you count it joy when the devil is getting busy in everything? In my business, in the children's business, in the spouse business, just all up in the family business. Families are going against all and things are happening. How can you actually count it joy? I want to take my time this morning and tell you that, especially in times like those that I just mentioned, are the times that you should be counting it joy. When you're going through things, difficult times. Family times, that's when you should count it all joy. Because God says in his words, you are, you are counted and expected, accountable and expected to count it all joy. And you can do this, you can count it joy. Yeah, you can go ahead and count it joy in this. Knowing that people, problem, and circumstance change. You're going through something today, but just hold on, it's going to change. People change. Boy, they really have changed. They're not like they used to be. People change. Problems change. Circumstances change. But you can count it joy because God never changed. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever you're going through, yeah, you're going to go through some things. Those things are going to happen. People change. Family going to even change. People that you thought you could depend on are going to change. But God never does. You can count it joy. Because God never changed. He sees what you're going through. He knows what you're going through. Not only does he see, not only does he know, but he cares about what you're going through. God cares about his children. Our God will not sit idle long. The God we serve will not just sit there and watch long. Yeah, he may sit there a while, and, but he's not going to sit idle long. The Bible says that I can say that because he never sleep nor slumber. The Bible says he watches our going out and our coming in, meaning God got us. Regardless of what you're going through, God got you. What a good feeling to know that God got you. What a good feeling to know that somebody got you. Don't worry about it, I got you. That's what God is telling us today when he's saying to count it all joy. What a good feeling to know that God got you. What a good feeling to know that God got me. Have you ever gone to a game? Maybe out to a van or maybe out to eat. It may be your favorite restaurant. It may not be uh, 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 McDonald's. It may be something, an uh, uh, expensive restaurant that you go through, go to and, and you place your order and you're standing in line and you make it up to the, to the cashier and it's time to pay. And, 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 and someone, a friend or even sometime a stranger say, I got you. Don't worry about it. I, I got him. I got those two people in front of me. I got those three people behind. Have that ever happened to you? It's happened to me before, and I must tell you, it's a good feeling. It's a very good feeling. This is what God is telling you today. I got you. I got you. What you're going through, I got you. Count it all joy, because God got 
whatever you're going through. Whatever you're facing or going through, regardless how long it's been, regardless who's involved, God is telling you today, He got you. You can go ahead and count it all joy because God got you. You are mine. You are covered by my blood. We're shed up on Calvary. Whatever this world offer you, regardless what weapons are formed against you, they shall not prosper because God got you. God got you covered. I got you because you're my child. You're my children. I got you covered. Isn't that a blessing? Church, that brought joy to my heart this morning when God gave me that message. Like he said, I got you. That's a blessing. So many times we have conditioned ourselves to believe that every time we go through something, or every time we go through difficult times or trials and tribulation, uh, we, uh, we need to know today that sometime we want to consider it, I'm sorry, every time we go through something, we consider it bad. We'll consider it something that we have done. Something that we have gone through or caused ourselves. We need to know today that sometime God allow us to run low. You need to hear this today. You know, so many times want their cup to be filled every day. So many times people want their sheds and their barns overflowed every day. They want, want, want as much as they can get. But we have to understand that there's time that God allow us to run low. There's time that God want us to run out. There's time that God want us to do without so we can learn to count it all joy. See, if you don't go through things, if you, if you have everything you need, if you don't, if you don't experience those things, you're, gonna, you're not going to know how to count. You're gonna, you're, God said, I want to allow you to go through those things so that you can learn. As my wife said, I've learned to count. God allows us to go through those things, not to make you feel bad, not to add up, no, so that you can count it all joy. Counting it joy means that we may not understand why it's happening. You may not understand why it's happening right then. And you may not understand why it keeps happening to you. So many times we ask ourselves, why me, Lord? Lord, why am I going through this? Lord, what I do wrong? So many times you may not understand why it's happening to you. But in your going through, one thing is certain. You can depend on God at all times. One thing is certain. You can depend on God. In your desperate times, you can trust in God in difficult situations, and you can believe in Him in unbelievable times. I hope you caught what I just said. You can believe in Him in unbe unbelievable times, knowing that faith without works is dead. The Bible says that if we keep the faith, God will do the work. If we keep the faith, God will do the work. Do it all, no matter what it is, who it is, how many times it's been, how long it's been. You keep the faith, and God will do the rest. You keep the faith, count it all joy, and sit back and watch what God can do in your life. You may not know what he is doing, but you can trust him that it's going to be all right. So you may not, he said, my ways are not your ways, your thoughts are my, not my thoughts. You may not. You know what he's doing, but you can trust him that it's going to be all right. You may not be able to see what he's doing, but you will be able to walk through the windows and doors once he finished. You may not understand his plan. You may not understand his ways of doing things, but when God finished, you will be able to understand it better by and by. Oh, I see what God was doing. Oh, I see why God sent me over there. Oh, I see why my family was like this. Oh, I see why I ran out. I see why I didn't have the money. Because God wanted me to understand it better by and by. Knowing that God has a plan. And God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan and God has a purpose for my life. I want you to remind yourself on a daily basis that God is in control. If you can say that and mean that in your heart and, and trust and, and, and know that, just say to yourself on day, God is in, con in control. Knowing God is in control and doesn't need man approval for anything should make you jump and shout for joy. Should make you jump and shout that God, knowing that God's in control and doesn't need man approval for anything, you should be able to get a jump and just count it all joy that he don't need man's approval. He's in control. Because God... What do you mean God's in control, Pastor? God knows what's best for us. 
jump for joy because God knows what's best for you. God knows what's best for me. God knows what's best for us. And if it's any time we need joy in this world, any time we need joy in our lives, any time we need joy in our schools, any time we need joy in our government, any time we need joy in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our families, or in times like these right now. We must believe every day God is working on a plan to bring joy into your life. Every day God is working on a plan for joy to have for his children to have joy in the midst of troubles. He's working on a plan to have blessings in the midst of cursing. Every day he's working on a plan to have faith in the midst of doubt and unbelief. Working on a plan to prove to his children that they can count it all joy. Knowing God got them. Count it all joy. You know what? It's okay. Y'all can't see it, but God got me. They can't see it, but God got me. So today, church, families and viewers online, I want to encourage you and remind you that God is your strength from day to day. I want to encourage you to keep looking unto the hills from which cometh your help because God is your strength from day to day. The songwriter states, without him, we will surely fail. We will fail without him. He is our strength and our salvation. With Jesus on our side, everything is going to be all right. With Jesus on our side, every day we can go ahead and count it all joy. This morning, church, God wants me to remind you that it's okay to go through some things. It's okay to endure some troubles every now and then. It's okay to climb the rough side of the mountain every now and then. It's okay for storms to come in your life every now and then. It's okay to feel like you're going around in circles. Or it's okay to say that if it's not one thing, it's another. It's okay to run low. It's okay to run out every now and then. When these things happen upon you, in which they will, because you need to start when these things happen. It say if, but in verse 2 it says when these things happen, you need to start counting. You need to start counting. And I'm not talking about one, two, three, four, five, six. You need to start counting, counting the joy that God is allowing you to go through. Allowing you to go through these things. Start counting it all joy because everything you go through, I want you to listen to this here today. Everything you go through is grounds for joy. Everything you go through are planting seeds for joy. It may hurt, but it's setting, it's creating grounds for joy. May make you shed tears, but it's grounds for joy. May not see how you can provide or pay for it, but it's grounds for joy. May not can make ends meet, but guess what? The Bible says it's more commentary says it's grounds for joy. Even your hardships, your trials, your tribulation, your storms of life are grounds for joy. What you're going through, grounds of joy. What you're dealing with are grounds for joy. I want to close in these words today. If you are willing to count, if you're willing to count it all, make sure you catch that word. If you're willing to count it all joy, not pick and choose some things, but if you're willing to count it all joy, this is the results of counting it all joy. Through God and with God on your side, the time will come. I want you to listen to this here, church. If you're willing to count it all joy, going through those trials and tribulations, People talking about you, persecuted. Seem like people are turning against you. If you're willing to go through those things, and they're going to happen, count it all joy. If you're willing to count it on joy, all joy through God and with God on your side, the time will come when God will give you the opportunity to look back on what you were going through. The time will come when God will give you the opportunity to look back at what you were going through. Look back at what you was enduring. Look back at who you were dealing with. Look back at what you were dealing with. And you will see exactly what God had brought to pass. And this too shall pass. Whatever it is today. And this too shall pass when you're willing to count it all joy. Church, in all going through, my wife and I, we had things that 
was a, a hardship or enduring things that we would, my wife created a fake can. And she would say, we're just going to count it all joy and drop it in the can. We'll count it all joy and drop it in the can. The bill's higher than the money. No money here. We got a doctor. We were sick going through this here. Doctors wanting to do this here. Whatever we was going through, my wife said, do that faith can. We're going to count it all joy. And then we're going to drop it in the can. And just move, keep continuing on having faith and trusting in God. And then after 30 days, my wife would pull out all the things that we had put through in the can and count it that we had counted all joy and guess what when we counted it we was able to take items out after 30 days oh yes yeah, some we had to put back in there but some of them we was able to take out after 30 days count it all joy and this too shall pass don't know what you're going through don't know whoever it is or, or what may be headed your way God is telling you today count it all joy and God will bring it to pass. May God bless you this hour. Pray that you not only hide these words in your heart, but you will share this message with someone else that someone else may be blessed. And no, church, I'm gonna be saying this. God got you. God got you. God definitely got you and God got me. God bless you this hour. <laughs>